Okay, so if you have been following my channel, especially my community page recently, yes, I recently received the brand new RTX 3090 Kimpin graphics card from EVGA and from Kimpin, and there was also a brand new 10900K in that small black box you saw in the image, and we will be testing out that CPU today. So it's a completely retail 10900K, although it has been pre-tested of course, but it's technically the very same one you can find in retail stores. So uh, let's just get on quickly. So let's end the BAUS and before we do any settings or before we uh, put in any settings, you can see here's the VID value of this particular uh, 1900K. So it's 1.01 volts and well it's low but it's not the utmost lowest VID value I've seen when it comes to these 1900K Common Lake CPUs. So uh, I'm also running 2 times 16 gigabyte G-Skill uh, Ripsource 5, 4266-17. So uh, let's load the uh, uh, Kimpin daily profile for dual rank uh, memories. So manual and let's let's quickly or let's just aim straight away for 5.4 gigahertz CPU overclock across all of the 10 cores. So 5.4 for 8, maybe 50. I will uh, disable the AVX ratio offset for now so that we can actually run Cinebench R20 and so on, which do technically utilize ADX a little bit, although very, uh, only uh, in a very minimal way. One point, uh, let's put 1.3 volts, but with minus 50% small droop on uh, the low line calibration. Max out the uh, PWM switching frequency. 1.4 volts on the system agent and I.O. And not sure if this is really needed, but I will just set 1.1 volts on the PCH. Memory 4800, 1.48 volts. 18, 18, 36, 23, 16. We have to use common rate 2 with dual sided memory sticks. And I will just keep the third timings at this level, so I will not touch them at all. Auto on the RTLs and UEFI. So these are the settings. They might sound a bit rough, but let's see if they actually work. So F10, save and exit. Okay, so now we are in the operating system. I have actually made some pre-tests already so that we can make the uh, video shorter. So uh, let's just open CPU Z to verify the frequency we are running. So uh, 5.4 across all of the 10 cores. This isn't correct. I will. We can. Sh we can use a different software to follow the actual voltage. Memory: 32 gigabytes, 5 gigahertz on the cache. 4800, 18, 18, 18, 36. Common rate two. So uh, let's open uh, Cinebench R15. Although many prefer R20 nowadays, but let's just do a quick pretest uh, in R15. Let's open up, open up the test, and let's open core temp to follow the uh, temperatures using custom water cooling loop. Uh, so this is ambient based custom water cooling loop and the ambient temperature is at 20 or 21. So very or relatively cool. So uh, let's just, to see the actual voltage level of the CPU, let's open up EVGA Elite X1 and let's just keep it open. Uh, throughout the test. So uh, here we can see the vehicle has been set at 1.3 volts, which we, did, which we did in the BIOS. Current value is reading 1.294 and with minus 50% small droop, it should overshoot to let's say 1.32 under load. So uh, let's fire this test up. So 1.318 around that mark. And the average of the core maximums is like 59, 60, 61, I think 61. So easy pass at 5.4 gigahertz on the core. And I think it was 50, uh, 50 on the cache and 1.3 volt set. So that's absolutely insane. So 2977 around that mark. What we could do, we could try to run our 20 at this very same uh, at this very same speed and voltage 
so let's fire it up not sure if there's a significant difference in the temperatures compared to our 15 seems to be the same this far but of course this they this test takes a little bit longer than R15. So 61, 62, 58, 62, 62, 63, 62, 62, 61, 60, 58. So like 61 as the average of the core maximums. Quite good, if you ask me. And yes, I will do a separate video where I will cover my custom water cooling setup because many of you have been asking for me to show my setup, but it's quite all kill for just CPU cooling, I know. So, 7046. <laughs> 5.4 gigahertz. In Silimens R20 with only 1.3 volts set. 1.318 as measured under load. So, it's quite rough, I have to say. So, uh, let's actually save this score. All what I don't like about the R20 is the very large uh, window size. So uh, it's impossible to show everything with full test window in the same screenshot. So let's just quickly take this score. So mainboard using the Z490 Dark Kimpin, yes, with the version 1.07 retail BAOS. So far I like this version the most. So what we could do next uh, is that we could try 5.5. I did a 5.5 gigahertz run back in uh, May, but it wasn't that good because uh, I was very on the edge. So I was using uh, uh, real-time priority in R15 and I was even shutting down explorer.exe and uh, just minimizing everything because I was because I was so on the edge. So let's try to do like a more proper 5.5 gigahertz run this time, but let's do it in R15 first. So uh, let's open up R15 and let's go to EV, EVJ Elite X1. I will put the link to the place where you can download this particular software if you use this particular motherboard with a 10900K or similar. 10th gen Intel CPU. So 5.5 five. and let's put 1.37 volts. I think it needs 1.37 for 5.5 R15. Same voltages on the other spots. So now we 1.361. Let's close this one. Let's just follow the temperatures while we run. Sixty, maybe sixty-eight degrees, sixty-seven, sixty-eight as the average of the core maximums. An easy pass, three thousand and thirty-two points in R15. Let's try to actually lower the V core a little bit before we take any score. So 1.365. I want to try that one. Okay. 1.365. Okay, it went worse and the core temp hang. So I think yeah, I don't have the services, so not really, not really working. It did pass, but it's not like a successful pass because now it will end up in a, some sort of crash. So 1.37 volts as the minimal value for 5.5 gigahertz. That's a very good result, if you ask me. The previous 10900K 5.5 gigahertz run, which I did in May, that was with 1.39 volts and. Uh, it was uh, much cooler temperatures. I think the uh, average of the core maximums was like 62, if, I, if I'm correct. And it wasn't like a proper run because everything was like minimized and so on. But yeah, I will reset and we can do R20 run. Okay, so before we try the R20 version of Cinebench, I want to quickly show you how much the real-time priority can help you to pass 
these uh, particular tests. So now I have set 5.5 gigahertz again across all of the 10 cores, but 1.365 volts on the V core. And same low light calibration of minus 50%. So let's close this up. And we have set R15 to real time mode. Let's open it up. And when you, if you bench or if you want to uh, obtain the best possible score in these tests, you should run the final, the very last runs in real time mode. It might help you to gain like 20 to 30 extra megahertz at the very end. So let's fire, the fire, fire up the test, but you cannot measure the actual temperatures or, of, or the core temperatures accurately when you run the test in real time mode because the whole screen will hang. So we got a score of 3055 points. So that's definitely an awesome score for 5.5 gigahertz frequency. So let's save this one very quickly and then we can try R20. But uh, really, you cannot really go above 5.5 on water cooling. Even if you set the voltage, if you, even if you set voltage to let's say 1.45, it's very unlikely that it would pass 5.6 gigahertz. So let's just take one screenshot and let's open up Elite X1 just to show the voltage values as well. And save the screen. Okay, so now we could try R20. So let's open up R20. But of course I will set I will set this to different one, so let's put 5.5, 5, 1.381, as we needed 1.37 for R15 in normal mode, I mean, let's put 1.385, 1 apply, so we have 5.5, 5. I think there's even a newer version of Citibench now available, just released last month, I think. So R23, but R20 is, I think it's the most popular one at the time of making this video. A very good score, 7177. So let's put the save, let's use the save result feature in Benchmate. So it will show us the maximum voltage 1.38 and it will show us the minimum and maximum uh, temperature value and this is actually very accurate so uh, uh, this is the same temperature value as the hottest core hottest individual core or, or should be somewhere around that mark so 7177 and let's uh, let's just quickly save save this screen Although I really don't like this particular version because the window is just so large. Cannot cover everything the same. So 5.5. 5.5 5. 5 gigahertz in R20. And the good thing about this particular CPU is that the IMC is a lot better as well than in my previous CPUs. I was able to do, for the first time ever, 4900 plus with my daily profile with single side memory sticks. So here is a score made with the 4400 CAS16 Trident Z RGB sticks. So 8332 points in Geekbench 3 at 5.4 GHz, CP 1.35 volts, 1.48 on the memory and 1.4 system agent and I.O. So uh, this is definitely a very good run, although this is still at the IMC limit. So I cannot, I definitely cannot run uh, HGI mem test anywhere near fully at this speed, but I can of course do it at 4800. So, uh, and here's a score made with the Kingston HyperX Predator 4133 Cas19 sticks as well. 18, 21, 21, 36, common rate 2 at 1.485 volts on the memory and 1.4 on the system engine and I.O. 8,468, that's definitely an amazing score 
uh, with like a daily setup on the memories. And here is a score at 4800 with these particular sticks. So 9486 points with 1.45 volts on the memory and 1.4 volts on the system agent and IO. So these are the sticks I'm using at the moment. So G skill, Rip Jaws 5, 4266, CAS 17. So I think that's pretty much it. We can, just for confirmation purposes, do one more run in our, in our 20. And I will increase the voltage a little bit so that we can check the uh, core temperature, the individual core temperatures like thoroughly throughout the test. So I will just put 1.4 volts. 1.4 volts are at 20. Let's fire that up. And run the test. But should be pretty much the same as in R15. So on quick note or on quick test, the average of the core maximums is like 70, I think. But looks all right, if you ask me. And we even improved 7,183 points. So definitely awesome. Average of the core maximums, 70 or 71, somewhere around that mark. So uh, I think the lowest value is, is somewhere around like 1.38 for this. But this, this is definitely awesome and this is definitely better than the previous CPU, which I was using yeah, in the very like late spring. So I think that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think. I think this CPU is definitely insane. And remember, this is, an, this is a completely retail CPU. No engineering sample logo whatsoever at the end of the specification line in CPU-Z. So uh, if this scales correctly and there's no issues whatsoever with temperatures on LN2, this one should be at least, at least 6.9 gigahertz capable in Cinebench R15 on LN2, maybe 7, but it really depends on the actual scaling. And the IMC really looks or seems to be insane. So maybe this CPU could do close to 5 gigahertz in SuperPi 32M, even with the CPU just on single stage cooling. But yeah, let's leave that uh, for another video and we can move on to the actual graphics card uh, in the next one. So let me know what you think. What do you, th what do you think about this particular CPU? Is it insane or truly insane uh, from your own uh, point of view so uh, leave a comment down below if you like to see this particular cpu running on the z490 dark kimpin this board is definitely there among the best uh, motherboards when it comes to the to the 10th gen common lake cpus so uh, thanks for watching one of my videos once again and i will see you on the next one Sadly no 5.5 gigahertz, but we got 5.5 and 5.3, so 5.3 on the cache at 1.355 volts with a strong fan on top of the CPU socket. So very good.